Hello everyone, good morning. Uh, my name is David from Unitronics. I'm the head of motion control and we would like to start the webinar. Uh, before we'll start, I would like you to please raise your hand in order for us to know uh, the connection is okay, you can hear us, you can see everything we're presenting. So I would like to see some hands, please, uh, before we will start. Okay. Okay, so we will start. Uh, first, start, uh, Boaz will start. Um, he will introduce himself, and then we will start with uh, the rest of the presentation. Good day, everybody. Uh, my name is Boaz Kami, Vice President, Sales and Marketing of Unitronics. Welcome all to our webinar today for uh, the server systems, the server products. Uh, Unitronic, uh, Unitronics offers today a wide range of um, uh, products in the frame of our uh, total solution platform. Of course, the core is our PLC plus HMI series, uh, but we offer as well uh, the frequency inverters of Unitronics, remote IOs, and today we are going to speak, David is going to go deeper into details about the Unitronics uh, server solution. Um, we encourage you all uh, to share with us um, your um, project opportunities that you will have. Please share with us any technical requirements you, uh, you will need. Uh, and this is in order to enable us to support you also technically. Uh, but we are going to have a special um, campaign together with the Unitronics distributors for uh, supporting you in terms of special discounts, special prices in cases you share with us, with your distributors, with us, with Unitronics, about the technical requirements for the coming uh, projects. Uh, this will help us to support you technically in all other aspects to make sure that we'll all have successful uh, penetration into the, to the server business. So please be in contact uh, also locally directly with your Unitronics distributors in this respect uh, to get further information about this campaign and the collaboration that we'd like to establish here. Uh, I wish you all a successful uh, business with Unitronics uh, servo uh, products as well as Unitronics products uh, generally and enjoy this webinar today and David may you please proceed from here. Thank yeah. you very much everybody. Yeah, Th thank you Boaz. Um, as Boaz mentioned, I'm in charge for the server solution over Unitronics. Um, the reason I would like you to share the project with us is in order to, for us to get some feedback and to know that the solution we're offering is appropriate to your needs because you're important to us. And besides, we are improving and adding features and, and products continuously, as you will see. Um, this is also another reason I would like to know more uh, in order to support you with additional product lines and, and solutions and features. Okay, so I'm starting. As Boaz explained, um, Unitronics continues to innovate and expand our product range. The purpose for doing that is very simple. We would like to offer you a one integrated solution for control and automation. We already have really wide range of products as part of our uh, one, in, one uh, integrated solution. As Boaz explained, it already contains the complete range of PLCs plus HMIs you're already familiar with. Uh, we will launch this year the Unistream PLC, which is a, a Unistream controller without a, a hardware HMI. It contains only a virtual HMI. We offer for more than a year a full range of VFDs, full range with all the capacity you can, you can ask. Um, and everything is under one total solution, single software named Unilogic. Besides that, um, as you already know, our uh, solution also includes uh, a total solution for Industry 4.0, as MQTT, SQL, OPC UA, 
and so on. And today I'm going to present our server solution. Um, we would like to start with the hardware itself, and then I will get to the advantages of using our uh, uh, solution. I'll do a, a quick demonstration of the new features and capabilities, and then um, you will have some time for questions. I'll do around two or three uh, uh, stops in order to allow you ask questions, okay? Um, so if you have anything to ask, you can write it down on the questions and I will do my best to answer that. So I would like to start with what we actually offer. We started offering uh, our servo as a servo bundle. The bundle includes servo motors and drives along with proper cables uh, that supports from 50 watt to 5 kilowatt in terms of power. Okay, you can see the voltage level and, and power levels on the slide. Uh, we can support you with a single phase of 200, uh, 220 uh, from 50 watt uh, to 1 kilowatt single phase. Um, you can get also three phase of uh, 380, 400 volts uh, from 1 kilowatt to uh, 5 kilowatts. So basically, the one kilowatt supported also in a single phase and on a three phase uh, solution. And besides, we also support uh, a three phase of 220 uh, volts from 750 watts to uh, uh, five kilowatts. Okay, so um, this is the voltage level and the power levels we uh, offer. In terms of motors, we offer uh, brushless uh, motors. Um, and holding brake is optional for every model and have every uh, power rating you, you would like to get. Um, we provide two types of encoders. One of them is a 23-bit absolute, that's a, a Nikon encoder. And the second one is 20-bit incremental. They're, bo they're both encoders over serial communication. So in terms, in terms of robustness uh, uh, to EMI interferences and so on, uh, it's very robust. Uh, besides, we have uh, high availability for most of our products, and the products are UL certified and CE certified as well. Um, the, I didn't mention that before, but the drives are uh, operated over a field bus. The field bus uh, is can open, but you'll see basically it's meaningless. Ethercat will be available soon, and also SEAL 3 STO will be available soon. Second. Okay. So, um, if I would look on a servo system architecture with the Unitronics solution, you would have the Unitronics PLC, some local I/O and remote I/O you can connect to your machine, and our VFD line you can connect several VFDs, and even servo now. That's the new part which we're gonna discuss about. Okay, um, now assuming you all uh, familiar with uh, machines that contain servo applications, um, I would like to talk about the common challenges we are familiar in terms of operating a system that contains a server. <clears throat> the first one is you need a lot of tools, software tools, and, 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 and uh, additional tools to support this kind of application. You need something to design your system. Uh, you need some softwares to configure and tune the servo. You need some uh, softwares to implement communication, uh, develop logic, and design the HMI. Besides that, and due to that, um, the required motion uh, skill set contains a few, I would say, key point, key members. One of them is someone to design and develop the mechanical interface and uh, infrastructure. One of them is to design the electrical cabinet and the electronics uh, over the application. Someone would need to take care of the communications and the control, and some system integration as well need to be done with these kind of machines. 
Um, besides that, as you all know, motion control operation requires many detailed steps uh, and, and many detailed understanding of, of small things that can affect the system. And due to that understanding, we developed in Neutronics our motion solution, uh, in which I will explain about right now. So, why should you use Unitronic solution? First of all, as I mentioned at the beginning, everything is offered on a single software. You can uh, uh, now choose your uh, hardware, define the communication, tune the system, diagnose it. Everything can be done over a single, true single software. So you don't need to have the knowledge and the experience with many software tools. The second one is communication integration. Uh, if you use solution that is not a full vertical solution, you might you you probably will have to deal with integrate integration of the communication uh, protocol. Uh, and on Unitronics, it's seamless. You just drag a function block, and then function the function block manage the communication and and the access behavior for itself without the need to have a special knowledge and understanding in that. Um, besides, we're all familiar with the mechanical calculation needs to be done in order to operate the servo. Uh, and in Unitronics, we developed a special uh, tool, mechanical properties tool, that can provide you with few uh, uh, capabilities. The first one, the most, I would say, basic and simple one is unit conversion. Each actuator you can drag and drop to the mechanical properties. You can define the actuator uh, uh, um, mechanical properties, and we would do the unit conversion for you in order to assist you to work with your user units without having the need to recalculate everything for every change you want to do in your application. And we support up to three actuators. So you can, as you can see in the picture, you can have a gearbox and a pulley and a linear actuator, everything defined on a single environment and, and super easy for uh, converting the units. Besides uh, controlling the mechanical restrictions and limitations, if you will provide the information for Unilogic, it will recommend safe values for your system operation in order to keep your mechanical uh, components safe and undamaged. Uh, that's if, and, and, and after doing that once, all you need to do is once, and you can change the limits and values as much as you want, uh, and it will protect you from sending wrong values on one hand. On the other hand, it's just a recommendation. So if you don't want to work with that, you don't want to do that, you don't know, you don't have to, okay? But this interface truly minimizes errors uh, for the control engineers or for the one that writes the uh, application over the uh, uni, uh, uni stream and uh, controller. So what else? We also um, reduce the development and complexity by offering a PLC open-based function blocks uh, like MC move relative, move, move absolute, MC power, and so on. You can see the amount of code needed on the left side uh, that can be done by simply dragging and dropping this uh, uh, motion function block. Um, this should assist you with programming. Um, what else? We developed a new default HMI control in order to uh, assist you with debugging the system, diagnosing, configuring everything over the HMI. Because all our controllers are HMI based, even the industry PLC that doesn't have a hardware HMI has a virtual HMI. So you can get this uh, uh, application automatically imported and you can. Uh, um, basically do everything you want for a single control over your HMI without previous programming. I'll show you some examples uh, in, in a few minutes, but basically you can get uh, uh, control for your limits, your uh, IOs, uh, your several IOs, the axis state, and you can even commission a movement, bi-directional movement, uh, number of cycles you can select, you can commission homing, you can tune the servo using a single primary tuning. You can even monitor the system using a trend. Everything is automatically imported and set up. So you don't, to deal, you don't have to deal with that. Now, 
I would like to do a demonstration. Before I'll do so, I would like to see if there's any if there are any questions, uh, and then we'll start with the demonstration. So let's see if there are. Any Okay, let's see. Um, okay, about, I have a question about prices. Um, prices is not something I can discuss uh, on the webinar. It's up to uh, your uh, channels. So please address your uh, distributors for that kind of information. Uh, okay, I have a question. Um, will will this webinar uh, demo program downloadable? Okay, um, yeah, I think I can provide this demo uh, program. Um, I will send it to you with the webinar uh, uh, summary. So if you would like to use this, of course you can use it. Uh, I have another question. Is it only for Unistream? Um, currently the solution is for Unistream. Vision uh, solution will be also supported, um, but it will take it'll, it'll be available soon. I, I believe it's a matter of a few months. Uh, by uh, the time that Vision will be available and will support servos, um, I, another question: Ethercat servo also on Unistream? Yeah, we will have Ethercat soon, and the Ethercat will be supported only in Unistream. Vision won't support Ethercat. Um, okay, I have a question. If it's a rebranded uh, servo or it's manufactured by Unitronics, uh, the answer is simple. It's a, it's a cooperation between Unitronics to uh, uh, another company. We don't manufacture that, but we did some ma major uh, uh, changes on the servo uh, solution offered by that manufacturer, so we have a cooperation. Um, some things were designed according to our requirements and demands. Some features were developed also according to that. Um, is it possible to, another question, um, two other, two last questions and I, I would like to uh, continue please. So I have a question. Um, wait just a second. Uh, is it possible to share can open with other devices? Yes, it's not only uh, we, we deliberately developed the working method over can open to be one that can support additional devices, but not servo. I mean, Unitronics would not support other can open servos. The servo supported is only Unitronics servo, but you can connect additional slaves over can open. It doesn't uh, interfere with that. Um, Will the Ethercat port be positioned on the HMI itself or will it be remote I.O.? It would be like a remote I.O., but it's still soon, uh, too, too early to talk about the Ethercat solution now. So uh, when we will launch it, I will have more details to share with you. Uh, if you don't mind, I would like to uh, show you the features over Unilogic itself. So I'm sharing now the Unilogic screen. You can see currently the uh, machine is online. I will turn it online and let's see how it looks like inside. Okay. Uh, first, you can see we added few features. One of them is in the uh, hardware configuration. You can see under hardware configuration you have motion drives. It was uh, exist. It was exist before, but you had only BFDs. Now you have also servos. You can see on the servo you can find a um, uh, few servo drives up to eight. Okay, and for each drive, you get automatically you can open ID and you can select or you should select the motor you want to use. You get a motor properties short brief. It tells you right now this motor for drive number one is a 400 watts uh, um, motor. No, that's a 50 watt motor with a, a absolute encoder 23 bit resolution. 
this is the rated current and the peak current, rated torque, peak torque, and so on. These are all the motor properties here under the uh, servo drive hardware definition. Okay, you can also define servo configuration. You can see an example for configuration. In the configuration, you can change all the servo parameters. They can be input invert or output invert, or maybe servo gains, um, some gears like limit switches and so on. And these are the fast configuration. This is pretty much similar to the VFD solution in which you can get all the parameters here uh, while the fast configuration is here. And if you change something, then you'll get, the, get to see it under the modified parameters and you can download the configuration for the modified only, you don't need to download everything. And basically most of the values are predefined. So the main idea of having our uh, easy to operate servo interface is basically for most application, you won't need to deal with the servo configuration at all. Uh, and as I'll show you soon, even if you didn't uh, change something and you would like to change it later on during the operation, you can do that using the, inter the interface I showed you, or you can write a, a code for that on your application. So beside of having this hardware configuration, we can see now there is another section that's called motion. Within motion, you can see the axis. Here we have eight servo axes defined. And on this screen, you get to do the um, allocation between the drives and the servo axis. The difference between the drive configuration to the servo axis is I would say the servo axis refers to your application, what actually happens and, and values that are related to the actual application, while the servo drive are, are I would say, more uh, software definitions or parameters definitions. Okay, let's get inside one of these axes, okay? Inside the axis, as I showed you before, you can see at the top the mechanical properties section. Under the mechanical properties section, you can see the motor, Okay, uh, and currently I have one actuator connected. If you, we would look in the right side here, you can see, just a second. Uh, on the right side, you can see the units I would like to work. I would like to work with uh, 0 0.1 millimeters, the travel distance uh, per one input shaft revolution. Okay, so it means every motor revolution I'm getting 300 units on this actuator. Besides, I can see additional settings. I can define the maximum stroke of the actuator. I can define the actuator uh, maximum force that can be applied or maximum torque can be applied on the actuator. Okay. And the units for that, uh, if you will define these parameters, then Uniologic will recommend safe values for your application. For example, let's say that my maximum input torque is, let's take it as a force in order to convert. And I wanna have two newtons. That is very low value. Here in the top, I would get a warning. You see that warning sign? Uh, and that warning sign tells you what's, what's the problem with, with, the, um, with your uh, definition, with your mechanical properties settings. And you also get warning relevant right aside to the parameter that has that caused the issue. For example, here you can see that due to the maximum load force I defined, the axis uh, 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 torque limit exceeds the mechanical limit, which is 66. Okay, so according to Unilogic and this mechanical properties definition, in order to keep my actuator safe, I need to enter. 66 as the uh, positive torque limit and as the negative torque limit. I will change it because it's not true. And you see after I change that, that, that warning, it's just a warning, so it won't interrupt you with compiling and downloading the code, but it warns you, okay? So you can choose what to do with that information. Okay, let's jump to the second actuator. I have additional actuator, you see it's moving right now. That's the one with the Unitronics logo on it. And here you can see a bit different definitions and, and, and deliberately I did, didn't define anything else on the, um, 
uh, range settings and torque and, and speeds and so on in order to show you that the system will still operate uh, uh, and, and allow you to compile even if you won't define that, okay? Here you can see what I showed you before. Uh, the warning indicates what's the problem. Here it says, according to the information, the axis torque limit exceeds the maximum allowed torque and also the velocity exceeds the maximum allowed velocity. You would see that also on the parameters themselves. Uh, so we will be able to know what's the problem, you can change them. So this is the mechanical properties. Now, um, here you can see our uh, um, calculation. Under dynamics, you can change several related parameters that are related to your application, like motion profile, with it, is it an S-curve or a trapezoidal, uh, the maximum acceleration, maximum deceleration, uh, the behavior in, in emergency stop, uh, in position error, velocity error, and so on maximum torque, and so on. And all these values can be defined here. Um, besides, you can select the relevant method, homing method. For example, let's say I would like to have hard stop homing. So I would select this method and says, um, I, I, I need to define the velocity search uh, for the hard stop and for the uh, index because this method contain index search. Besides that, the acceleration and, and the blocking time and so on. Um, that's, it was 35 before, I don't want to change that because I want to connect in the online. Okay, so this is the uh, mechanical uh, uh, properties and the, and the axis interface. Now, in, on the motion, as I mentioned, we have the axis and we have also motion, motion diagnostics. If I'll get inside the motion diagnostics, I can select the axis I would like to diagnose Let's select, for example, axis number one, click start diagnosing, and let's see what happens. Now the PLC connects, the, the PC connects to the PLC. The monitoring is done by the uh, uh, PC itself. First, it can show you the axis state, and it can show you the error uh, um, log, and if there are error, it can allow you to clear the error history, and it will provide, it will offer you with a solution for the error you'll have. In addition, you can access the um, parameters and see what was configured values and what are the uh, read values for your application. These values are set over the um, axis uh, interfaces I showed you before. In addition, we also developed a new scope. The scope will allow you to record and monitor various uh, 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 options. For example, here I can record the um, motion profile over the velocity. This is our velocity profile for axis number one. Uh, in addition, I can record something else. For example, I can record the position. Okay, these scope samples in one millisecond. So that's the fastest can open can support. It's I would say it's a real time, it's continuous, it's not uh, generating a buffer and then reads it once or something like that. You can stop the scope uh, in order to have a zoom in or something like that. Uh, and besides, scope works in user units and you can see the time. And it, as you can see at the bottom, it's still it's still a recording. So I can always go back and, 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 and uh, continue with, with monitoring and, and see everything that was re recorded. Well, Okay, in addition, you can select uh, different other parameters. For example, let's say I would like to have position actual value and torque actual value, okay? And, and record that. Now we can see the behavior of both axes. And as you can see, it's automatically, the, the screen is automatically adjusting to the values, okay? So I will stop the recording here. Uh, this is a dish, a, another feature we developed. Okay, so we talked about adding the hardware. We talked about uh, um, uh, diagnosing with the high-speed scope and see all the, uh, the parameters. We talked about the axis interface and the mechanical properties. Now let's talk about programming, okay? Some of you asked me for the code. Here you can see motion function block, this is an MC absolute. Right now it's running. 
Uh, you can see a motion block that contains the axis we're working with. Uh, it has an execute bit and so on. I would like to stop being online for a second. Under the uh, letter elements in the toolbox, you can see we added two new features. One of them is COM servo. Here you can write or read a configuration. It's related only for configuration. You can write the whole configuration. You can send a, a specific parameter one. And in order to make the axis move, you have this motion control uh, uh, section. Under motion control tab, you can see all the function blocks we developed. These are all single axis uh, 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 function blocks. I will talk about that. And here you can see all the function blocks we developed and in order to support you like MC home, uh, MC power, move velocity, set position, jog, and so on. Um, so basically, that's it. I would like to do um, a short demonstration and show you how easy it is to configure a, a new application. But before I'll do so, I would like to have uh, additional slides on my presentation. Okay, so first, let's stop the axis from moving. So, after we saw all of that, we saw the Unilogic solution, we saw the hardware uh, uh, offering, I would like to talk about the value you can gain from our solution. Okay, first, it should simplify the implementation of emotion applications for you. That's the main, main reason we developed that. Okay, because we understand the difficulties, and we did our best in order to ease you with that. Okay, so because it simplifies implementation, it minimizes complexity and it reduces development time, which is expensive and it's important for you. Um, as I showed you, programming is easy using a drag and drop PLC open based function blocks. Um, and everything is under one unified software environment. As you asked before, uh, I showed you your logic, this logic will be available soon with some additional features or uh, uh, different features for, for visual logic. Um, besides, uh, it provides you with a, with a one-stop solution from Unitronics. It's a full solution from Unitronics. So you can get support from our great support team. Uh, you would be able to work with your distributor closely and get the whole solution from Unitronics. Integration would be easier so you can gain out of that. Um, when we developed the interface, we thought about few uh, uh, market targets. Most of them, I can tell you, most of the applications we targeted are industrial applications, may, mostly on machine building uh, 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 solutions. Um, something like packaging applications, some pick and place applications, material handling, conveyors, uh, say smart conveyors because standard conveyors can work with straight VFDs or something like that. But if you have like flexible machine with different sizes and length, uh, you need to control. You can use servo, and it would be easy for that kind of type for that type of applications. Besides, you can have like uh, with a very accurate uh, force or torque controlling for clamping and, and capping applications. And uh, you can do some dosing applications and so on. Everything on these applications are single axis interface up to eight servo axis per a PLC. So you can have eight servos under one Unistream uh, with no interpolation. Um, and the response time I would say would be uh, PLC standard is a matter of few milliseconds, five, six, seven milliseconds, it depends on your application. Um, what we're not targeting currently is CNC or robotic applications, uh, mostly because they require higher response time and interpolation capabilities. And our solution currently is tar targeting, I would say, the core of the uh, machine controlling and the uh, additional capabilities for uh, interpolations and, and I would say 
uh, electronic gearing and and so on would be supported in the future using ether okay it won't be supported over can open uh, so it would be on the future um, i would like to talk about three or yeah i would say three success stories um, that were shared with with us by our customers uh, this is the first application from india it's a punching machine in this application you can see two servos that feed a punching machine with a, a, a aluminium profile and then you can see how the servo is moving to the exact position and then the punching the machine punched the uh, um, profile with the current uh, place and the current size okay this is i would say nice application simple one the access are not synchronized uh, you can see it's very accurate it works uh, uh, pretty fast mechanisms uh, can be uh, uh, we support a variety of mechanisms and you can see it's work pretty fast and this is the first one i would like to show you another application if you don't mind uh, that's another application we did uh, on Stratasys. This is a um, very simple one with Unistream PLC, so you don't see any HMI out of the uh, control panel, just few buttons. What this machine does, it cleans uh, extruders, so you can see the brush, it rotates, uh, it stops on specific stations where the heaters are located, uh, it senses uh, torque so if the brush is stuck or or uh, it gets uh, twisted or something that should happen the servo can sense the uh, torque and in this way we can control also the positioning the speed and the torque for this uh, uh, extruder okay and a third application it's not a video but that's an application that was was shared with us also that application uh, cuts um, a different depth of cuts in order to sense some radioactivity from cylinders. Okay, uh, it allows you, sorry, just a second. So it allows customer to do some measurements on different places on, on a pipe. Um, but that's an additional story. Um, what I would like to uh, uh, share with you is what's unique on these applications. As you can see, they're not the most complex ones. It's not like there's any special technology in them, but the fact they were performed by engineers that have very minor or didn't, didn't have any experience with motion control uh, uh, in the past, and just just by using our interface our software our tools they manage to do these applications pretty easily and, and if you would ask them they will tell you about their satisfaction from the the simplicity of how things work okay so and, and this is what we're actually targeting we would like to assist you to get this great easy to use interface uh, for your machines and for your applications and as Boaz explained at the beginning, if you have any questions and you would, and you would like to share applications with us and your, with your distributors, we will be glad to assist and support that. Um, so I would like to, before, before I, I'll continue, I would like to address some additional questions. So uh, let me see. Okay. Um, okay, let's see what we have. Um, I was asked again about different servos and drives if they are supported with our controller. No, look, the main idea is we selected a product, we tested it, we developed some features and we 
made it fit perfectly for the uh, software we're offering and for the PLC. Due to that, we cannot support all the uh, servos out there. Uh, that's why we're offering a full solution that is Unitronics full solution. It's not just like a, a motion application and motion capabilities for our controllers. It's for our drives and we support only our drives. Um, what else? No, I answered that. Um, let's see. Interpolation is quite key when it comes to motion. What's the future plan about that? Uh, okay, I got a, a, a question about the interpolation. So as I mentioned, currently we're targeting, I would say, with this solution, we target simple machine, which is the majority of the application. So I would, I, 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 I bit disagree with you in having say interpolation is a key point, but because most of the applications in the uh, uh, machines built there uh, out there and, and the I would say industrial machines we're targeting are single axis. However, we understand interpolation a need is uh, get, getting more and more common. That's why we will support interpolation, but it will happen all with our EtherCAT solution. As, a, as I mentioned, EtherCAT will be available soon. Um, what's the purpose of future EtherCAT support? As I mentioned right now, EtherCAT support, uh, the reason we will support EtherCAT is due to the fact we would like to extend our offering also for interpolations uh, and when EtherCAT will be available, uh, it will also support some uh, interpolation capabilities, gear ratio, and so on. I have another question. When EtherCAT will be available? Uh, soon. I don't want to mention a date. As soon, it's a matter of a few months. Okay? That, that's how soon it is. It's not like, like we're talking about in years. It's a matter of a few months. What about encoder connection? Um, no, our encoder, uh, our drive supports only the motor encoder. So if you have an external encoder currently, you cannot connect it directly to the drive, you can connect it to the PLC. Um, and then you can do like, we have a demo application for doing that, for, for getting an external encoder and doing like position control over an external feedback. It doesn't have to be encoded necessarily, it can be also something analog, but basically we have a, a, a application a example for that, uh, and it won't be supported on these drives. On the, maybe the next drives, we uh, examine maybe to add uh, secondary feedback. Um, Uh, Unistream supports, uh, I was asked about the protocol, the, the communication protocol it supports. Unistream supports a variety of protocols. However, the server drives we're working and offering supports currently only can open. And as I mentioned, in, uh, in the next few months, we'll also offer EtherCAT. These are the motion protocols so we're going to support. We're not supporting uh, uh, something else like uh, maybe Modbus or something like that. Okay, it would be, someone asked me to show you step-by-step -step application. I will do that in a few minutes. Okay, what's that? Let's see. When will Visilogic be replaced by you know, logic to program to vision series units? <laughs> That's a good question. I don't think it's related directly to this, so I, I cannot answer that. But I can tell you that with VisiLogic, you will be able to program servos uh, and, and you will have some functionality about that. Okay. Um, so I would like, if you don't mind, I would like to show you a demo how 
can we define servo out of the box? And this is what I'm going to do now. So let's open a new project. Uh, I'll save my project so I can send it to you later on. Um, let's call it webinar. And today is that's the date of today. Okay. So what I have here, I have a, a, a Unistream PLC. Okay. With I think that's my yeah, that's mine. Okay, so let's open a new project and, and look how it can be done so easily. Okay. So we selected the uh, Unistream PLC. Since it can open, I would need to have a, a, a can open adapter. Okay. Now, after adding that, I can go under the hardware configuration to motion drives, have a servo, servo drive. I can double click it. And you see, I got drive number one. Uh, that's the drive type. Here I get, we can open it automatically. I can select the motor I have. I have under the first drive, a 400 watts absolute encoder. That's what I have here. I can add or drag another drive. Um, the second drive would have with a different can open ID, as you can see. Uh, this drive is uh, 200 watts incremental. So that's the part number for that. And basically I finished with the hardware. Now I go to motion, access, let's add a new axis. If you click uh, adding the new axis, you get this import ready-made motion application. If you click import, you will get all the application I showed you before. Uh, actually, I didn't, so I sh I'll show it to you right now. If you click skip this for now, you don't have to do that. You can add it later on. Uh, you can select the drive, get inside the axis. Uh, this is our motor. As you saw, I have a linear actuator that has a uh, 30 millimeters per uh, revolution uh, um, each. Okay, I can define the rest of the units. You can see since it wasn't defined, I'm getting this error, uh, this warning, sorry. And all I need to do is change this because the maximum velocity is too great. Okay, um, basically that's it. Let's add another one because I have two. That's the second one. And let's say I wanna have the diagnostics application right click and then it's imported or you can just say uh, import in the previous screen when the pop uh, when it pops up okay now you see uh we already got an open code over a letter so you can edit it you can add features you can delete features you can do whatever you want it's open for your use besides now you'll see we get some additional screens added automatically everything is imported automatically so you can add the screens, you can add your logo, you can change things, you can do whatever, whatever you want, it's yours, okay, and it's open. Uh, so basically everything is here. Let's take the main screen, make it as a, as a default, okay? Set as main screen, um, and here under the letter, I should call the application itself. So I'm dragging this one here. Uh, don't worry, first of all, you can get this webinar recorded. Second, you will be able to get to see the videos uh, on the help, on the, Un Un on the Unilogic help. Uh, you will get a link for this so you can do it for yourself. Okay, basically that's it. I finished. Uh, let's just do and allow a VNC for that. Okay, I'm compiling now. So if we will summarize what I had to do, I had to define the hardware, which was the PLC, the can open port, and two drives. Then I defined the axis in terms of uh, um, what happened. Oh, I know. I didn't change the velocity settings of the second axis, uh, uh, and that's too fast. So it's more than what motor can support. I knew it. Okay, let's do that. Now let's download. So uh, as I were saying, we define the drives, we define the axis. Basically, I did nothing with the axis. 
skill too much? Yes. No. Let's have. Uh, ah, I know. It seems like I didn't add any actuator here, so that was the problem. Okay. Now it should be okay. Yeah. Now it's okay. It's just a warning. It's not an error, so it will work. Um, so as I mentioned before, we need to define the user units. After defining the user units, you can get the application automatically imported, call it when you want it, and just download. And that's it. You'll see now I'll move these bo both of these axes. Okay. Uh, and then I will show you. Let's get the BNC here. This was the pre previous application. Okay. And after we will finish this download, I'll show you the new one. Meanwhile, I can answer some questions. Okay. Download and reset. Okay. Okay, it's finished. So let's start the VNC right now. So, okay, we're online. You should see now everything. I will open the VNC. Here's the VNC. That's our uh, automatically imported interface. You can see everything is here. First of all, I can enable the drive. You see now axis is in standstill. We can look at this actual position. Since it's with an absolute encoder, there is no reason I should lose it. You can see actual velocity, actual torque. You can see input state. Currently, no input is connected, so it's blank. You can change the limits, like uh, software limits or enable disable limit switches. Uh, everything is from here. You can change everything you saw on the axis interface from the axis configuration interface on the on the code okay um let's make it move first okay you can select every motion type you would like to have you can start with a jog adding some values let's say i want to have 56 millimeters per second and i'm jogging and you can see it's moving according to the jog you can even jog it for a few seconds you see, I clicked it, and then it kept on moving for two seconds. Besides, you can select a, a, a position movement and even a back and forth movement without having any need in defining additional uh, capabilities. Let's take 50 millimeters uh, with 500 millimeters per second and with that have high acceleration. Okay. Uh, now you can duplicate the values to the second motion profile and select five cycles. Now it will move back and forth five times. You can see it counts the amount of cycles that passed. Okay, five. Okay, and we didn't try anything. All we did was dragging a function log that calls this code. Okay, you can even have a tor control com command over here. Let's say I want to have 5%, not 50, 50 is too great. 5% with a torque slot of 5 per second, so we'll get to 5 in a second. You can see torque achieved these values. If I will change it for a bit higher than that, it will probably move. Okay. Yeah, so a bit more than that. Let's have, I don't know, 15 or 20. 20% should be enough. Okay, you can see the torque changes around 20. Actuator is moving. It got to a hard stop. So now torque is applied. It's around 20 and, and it, ke it keeps holding the axis in this torque. You can stop it 
from the control panel here. You can ask for homing. Let's say, for example, I would like to have um, hard stop homing. So I would like the axis to move in 34 millimeters per second, for example, and search for the index in 20 millimeters per second with high acceleration and select different homing method. Let's say I want to have minus three. Okay. Now it's moving towards you and looks for a hard stop. We can also change the servo tuning from here. It's over a single uh, parameter change. All you need to do is drag in, uh, uh, this slide bar or type the value. Meanwhile, you can see the axis finished is homing uh, and stands in position. You can see state is standstill. And we can also re record using a trend. You can define the trend and you can do some recordings uh, for the uh, servo. Okay, let's do uh, some recording for that. Uh, let's take motion. Let's ask for position control. Wait before I'll jog it backwards. Okay, let's select high amount amount of cycles. And let's record with the trend. Of course, we can see small values because the limits for the trend are very great. So let's change that. Instead of 3000, let's have it around 30. Now, you know what, let's use 50. Oh, sorry, position is greater. Let's reset the position. Let's start the movement again. Okay, now we can see the position in red. Um, you can see this on the trend. Of course, it's saved. So you can record and do whatever you want. You can tune the servo and, and check for the differences. And of course, as I mentioned before, you can get to the motion diagnostics and have a recording for this axis. Okay, let's say I wanna have a trace that show me the velocity profile. That's the velocity profile you see there. Of course, it, it's done for only one axis. I can select the other axis since I have two on my machine and we can do the same. You see, all I did was two clicks, change for a different axis and now it's moving the same movement of 50 millimeters uh, for each side due to the fact I used the scaling and, and entered the proper values. So basically, as I mentioned before, drag and drop, super easy, uh, almost out of the box operation. And I would like to continue. So before we finish, I would like to um, talk about what we actually help allow you. We allow you to have one unified software platform with automatic communication. You see, I didn't have to do anything about the communication, all I did was dragging some function blocks. Uh, because of that, it minimized the complexity. We provide you with embedded diagnostic tools, as I showed you right now with the interface that is automatically imported and with the trend and with the high-speed scope that built in <laughs> within Unilogic. Um, the control programming done by is easily done by um, uh, PLC open-based function blocks. And we offer a wide range of servos from 50 watt to 5 kilowatt. Uh, so 
if we talk about benefits, the main benefits for you is a single integrated solution. That's why all the questions about having different drives and so on, uh, can, they will affect that dramatically. So in order to provide a full integrated solution, we cannot do that. And we only offer this solution for our drives that were tested and implemented by us. Um, with everything under a, un, under a single development environment that brings pretty much innovative approach to motion control in, in the simplicity. The innovative it comes in terms of how we keep your application safe with mechanical properties, how we build and provide you with a built-in tool. So if you have a new system and you need to do some integration, you won't need to deal with that and to program and do anything. All you need to do, drag and drop the, the function code. You get on the HMI, you can do everything from this interface, everything on a single axis environment and it works it just works it's super easy uh, um, this is what we do did for you and of course we we target our applications and, and, and solution to be uh, um, pretty competitive in terms of uh, total cost of ownership so if you have any question now i would be glad to answer before let's see what i have here Okay. Um, servo motor and drive available in Unitronics. Yes, as I mentioned before, we have some uh, uh, um, servos on stock. Most of the sizes should be on stock. We should have samples from every size on stock, uh, but in terms of higher volumes, we have some on stock and some can be uh, soon. Uh, other, uh, yes, I was asked again about having the way to operate with different drives. No, our solution is only for Unitronics drive. And um, about step-by-step -step application, as I mentioned, there's a video for that. You would see it on the help. Uh, and besides this uh, webinar would be sent to you. Uh, I was asked about the absolute encoder. Uh, absolute encoder is battery encoder. Uh, it's battery equipped. So uh, if you have any questions about that, I can sure I can answer. It's not a battery battery less if you aim that. Uh, Is it possible to download video recorded from the complete webinar? Yes, you will get the complete video. Um, what else? Oh, what's the difference between trapezoidal and an S-curve control? That's uh, pretty easy. I can say and trapezoidal doesn't have what's called jerk. So the axis is or on a, a, a constant velocity or over acceleration. Uh, it's affects the i would say the change in the mechanical state so trapezoidal is, is like smoothing the movement so it smooths the acceleration and deceleration and 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 then machine can work uh, i would say more smoothly and soft but there are also uh, uh, things that because of that customer does not always like the s-curve uh, uh, applications uh, because s-curve if you talk in terms of physics can get to higher uh, momentary uh, accelerations and generate higher momentary uh, uh, heat. So due to that, many doesn't like working with s curves but it's up to you. You have them both. Okay, I had a question about the uh, voltage levels. Okay, as I mentioned before, we have one voltage level, it's a, a single phase, uh, 220. Um, it supports from 50 watt to one kilowatt on one hand. On the other hand, the 750 watt and the one kilowatt uh, can also support three phase of 230. That's why if you look at the catalog, you would see they are numbered as C. C is two uh, is three phase of two, two um, and E is three phase of 380, 400 volts. So uh, 
if you have a 750 watt, you can operate it in two voltage, three phase of 2 to 30 or a single phase of 230. It's the same and the coding is uh, 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 like that because it can support both levels, okay? Uh, someone asked me about Unitronics VFDs. I will be glad to assist. You can also address your dis distributors. Um, currently, it's not the appropriate place for that, I think. Yes. Um, two last questions. Um, Okay, let's see. Yes, I have a good question here. Uh, is it possible to change target position when the servo is in mo motion? We have uh, on our motion block, uh, we have a tag that is named as continuous update. If you send a move absolute uh, and the continuous update bit is on, uh, then you can send different uh, commands for position on the fly and it will change. Uh, besides that, if you want to change uh, the movement, uh, the, change the command during the movement, you can also send every other function block you would like to have on the fly and it will change to that. Okay, that was a good, good question. Uh, I asked about CNC machine. It's not, I, I, as I mentioned before, our uh, server solution is not aimed for CNC. And machines because it requires interpolation and currently we're not targeting for interpolation. We're targeting for the majority of application in which single axis is, is, is sufficient for that. Um, I have a question if servo works exactly as VFDs and the answer is it's pretty much similar but it's not the same due to the fact it's a closed loop and it's higher uh, quality in terms of and frequency response and, and, and filtering and so on. Okay, I have a question if we support Ethernet IP, as I mentioned, we support with the servo can open and Ethercat will be available soon. Ethercat would be available on Unistream, yeah. Okay, I had a good question. How uh, can you change the setup settings for the drive? For example, the baud rate and the uh, and the can open ID and so on. Our drives uh, have like um, um, key uh, have buttons on 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 the top of them, so we will be able to uh, change the address by clicking these buttons to the specific uh, uh, function that called the uh, can open ID or the baud rate and you can change it there. And you can also download the user manual and you'll see additional information about operating over the buttons. Okay, so uh, if that's it, Okay, so if that's it, um, I will end for now. Uh, if you had additional questions and you didn't get any answer, you please feel free to contact your local dist distributors. And you can also contact us on servo at unitronics.com. Um, I will be glad to assist. Um, and thank you for being with us today. I wish you a good experience with our servos and I hope to broadcast to you soon the new features and the Ethercat. Bye-bye. Have a nice day.